All right, students, welcome to another video here, Test Yourself. And so in this video, we're gonna be going through the FIFO inventory method. This will be a big short answer problem. They'll go through a few questions on the FIFO inventory and how to account for it. And don't worry, we're gonna go through it step by step in pieces. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's go through this big problem here. We'll go ahead and underline and highlight the most important points. So Thompson's a manufacturing of toys uses the FIFO method to account for its inventory. Now the following here is the activity during the month of August. So this is important. Beginning inventory was 25 units. We will take a look at that in a sec. But they made some purchases. August 1st, they purchased 100 units at $4.50 each. Then 50 units at six dollars, 25, 85 at eight dollars. So during the month, they sold 167 units, and that's about 15 dollars each. Operating costs were 390, and the tax was 20 percent. So we're going to do this in pieces here. We're going to start with figuring out the cost to get sold and the ending inventory, and then we'll go from there. So, let me go ahead and move down here to make sure I have some room. So first off, what is FIFO? Well, FIFO really is just when you account for inventory, you take your oldest units that you got first, and when you make a sale, the oldest units is what leaves inventory. So let's go through that. The older units, and I mean by older, I mean by in time, like they first got them, they're gonna, Let's make that an arrow. They're gonna leave first. That's why it's called first in, first out. Whatever came in first in inventory is what leaves first when you make a sale. So the thing we gotta look at is our sales. So we know we have 167 units. And so we gotta go backwards, figure out the oldest inventory. And the oldest inventory here is gonna be this beginning inventory for 25 units. So what we'll do, We'll just write it out. We know that first, uh, let me go ahead and undo that. Let's see, there we are. Off. Okay, perfect. So the oldest right down here, we're gonna start with first, we sold 167 units. That's what we sold. So we know that's what we have to account for here. So if we move down a little bit, we sold 167, right? So we know that 25 of them leave first. And I'm gonna add something here just so we have it. We're gonna, this is actually gonna be at $4 each. We will need that number. So we know that each of those 25 units was $4. So let's go ahead and calculate that. That's really easy math there. So 100 bucks, that accounts for that. Now, how many units do we have left? Well, what we have to do is we have to go ahead and take what we sold, which is 167 minus 25. So now what we have is we have 142 units remaining to account for. And then again, we go to the oldest, right? So we purchased 100 units, you see here. We have 142 left to account for, so we're gonna use up all of this right here, let's cross it out. 100 at four dollars and fifty cents so multiply this out so it's going to be 100 times four dollars and fifty 400 and fifty dollars that's a hundred so now if you subtract a hundred from here we're at 42 units remaining to account for. So we go to the next oldest, which is August 10th, and we bought 50 units. So we don't need all 50, right? We only need what's remaining, which is 42, and each of those units were $6.25. So that equals There we are, $262.50. There we are. 
Now, what is we have? What do we have remaining here? This is a good question. So we didn't use all of this, right? We only used 42. So that means we have eight left here, right? Because there was 50 total. 50 minus 42 is eight. And then we had 85, the remainder there. So first question, what is the cost of goods sold for August? Well, all we got to do, and I'm going to move up here. All we have to do is just add these up and that's going to equal our cost of goods sold. So let's take a look. 262.50 will go up plus 450 plus 100. That is going to be 800. Ah, sorry about that. Let's try it again. 812.50. So we'll go ahead and write that in here. Cost of goods sold is equal to 812.50. Now it's asking, what is the ending inventory for August? Well, it's whatever is remaining. And so if we go back up, I can show you again. We had eight units here remaining, and then 85 units here. So we have to multiply by the, by the cost, though, for each category. So this was eight times $6.25. Let's do that math here. And we get $50. And then here, we have eight times 85, right? Times 85. 680. So, if we add these two up here, plus 50, we get $730. So let's move that down. That is gonna be our ending inventory. Not too bad, huh? So when we went through the cost to get sold and the ending inventory using FICO. Now let's go to the next uh, set of problems here. Okay, so same data set really, but a few different questions. Now it's asking, what is the gross income? Then what is the net income? Well, all we got to do here for gross income, first we got to get our sales, right? Because that's the very first step to get our income. So sales, we know it, it's 167 times the 15. So let's multiply that out. All right, sales will be 2505. Now what goes below sales? We're trying to get to gross income, if you remember, so I'll just call it GI for short. We're trying to get cost of goods sold, because that's what you subtract here to get to gross income. Luckily, we already got it, right? We just move back over to the previous problem, 812.50. Simple. So, 812.50. Let's go ahead and subtract it out. And we got 2505 minus 812.50. There we are. Kind of an awkward number, but that's okay. There we go. 1612.50. Now, let's get net income. Well, net income, if you know, is after taxes. So the first thing we gotta do, we have to subtract out these operating costs, very important. So let's go ahead and do that here. So subtract out column OC for short. That's gonna be 390. So subtract there. Okay. Ah, and I messed this up. Let me make sure I correct that. It's actually 1692. Now, take 1692.5 minus 390. And we get a, we'll just call this operating income. That's actually going to be 1302.5. Now to get our net income, we need to get our income taxes. And I'll make that IT, income taxes. Now we know our tax rate here is 20%. So what we do is take 1302. And there's two ways to do this actually. First way, you can multiply 1302.50 times 20% to get your taxes. 
And then there's another way where we can skip income taxes altogether and get to net income. And I'll show you both ways. So first we'll just do the first way and get your income tax. So 1302.5 times 0.2, 20%, right? So we get 260.5 for income taxes. And then lastly, our net income will be here. So we're going to go ahead and do 1302.5 minus 260.5. And there we go. Net income is equal to 1,042. Now, the other way to do it, to get your net income from operating income, all you do actually, you take one minus the tax rate, which would be 20% here. So that actually equals 80% and you just multiply that times 1302.5, right, your operating income. So 80% times 1302.5, and you get 1,042. So the same number as your net income, we just did a little faster way. All right, that's for those two problems. Let's go to the last set here. Okay, last set here, same data as before, but now we're actually looking for a few different things. First, how is the income statement affected? How is the balance sheet affected? Well, fairly simple. We know that our income increased by $1,042, right? That's what happened there. So on the income statement, that's what you would say. You say that, okay, well, we know we did income and we got 1,042, so we actually had a net income of 1,042, meaning net income increased. So that means your income goes up and that's how the income statement is affected. Last question is, how is the balance sheet affected? Well, what we do there, we go back over, all the way back to the original problem, if you remember, we had ending inventory. Inventory is an asset that goes on your balance sheet. So what happened? Well, inventory went up by 730. So if we go back all the way over here, we know that our current assets, right? Because inventory is a current asset. Current assets, or you can say inventory, it went up by $730. And I'm just gonna double check to make sure that's right. Back over here, yep, 730. Good to go, and that is how those um, financial statements are affected by this FIFO inventory. So we went through how to calculate cost of goods sold, ending inventory, calculating net income, gross income, and finally, how are the financial statements affected? And that was another edition of Test Yourself. These are practice problems that help you with your exams and overall just understand accounting. Please make sure to like, subscribe, but really support this channel. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.